Hello, listeners. You've heard the whispers, and I'll confirm, man to man. There are two little towns down in Florida, and you can find them on Disney's land. Don't be put out by the price of a house. Don't judge them by their exterior. By day, it's a dream for fans of the mouse, but nightfall attracts motives ulterior. Allow me to welcome you to the towns of Celebration and Golden Oaks down in Florida. Dissecting the Mouse proudly presents our very first Halloween Boonanza. Happy Halloween, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone else. Abby Halloween. Abby. Oh, that's adorable. Because <laughs> uh, it's kind of like the thing, but it's not the thing. Right. Okay. Um, and it's also your name, which is something that I think is fantastic. Oh, it's my name? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's my name. No, I'm just kidding. You see, Abby, <laughs> your name is Abby. That's why everyone keeps calling me that. Oh my gosh. I know. Let me mansplain to you your own name. Let me... <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh man. And yeah. actually, your name is actually Gaelic in origin. It <sighs> means a uh, gift <laughs> from the, the, the woods. I wish my name meant that. A gift from yeah. the woods. I think it only... My name, I think, is like... Since it's like a biblical name... Um, it's, uh, I think it means like either God rejoices or my father rejoices. Huh. Um, yeah. It's different. Like, di there's like differing translations, I guess, of it. Mine is also, I guess, a biblical name. Uh, Nathan, not Nathaniel. Mm -hmm. I, I keep, <laughs> I keep telling people I'm very quiet. It's Nathan. No yell. Ah. Uh Look at yeah. you. Aren't you clever? I'm so clever. Aren't you clever? I think at this point, I've jokingly called you Nathaniel so many times that, like, in my mind, you're Nathaniel. Oh, yeah. See, that's what I'm trying to avoid. <laughs> uh... Like, And I'm never going to name my child Nathan, uh, specifically because I don't want anybody to have to go through that whole, like, oh, your name is blank. No, it's this. Uh, Yeah, no, it's that. No. Yeah. It's yeah. It's not. It's not. But um, yes, no, my name means gift from God, which oh. um, it, it wound up being very ironic. Uh, it is, yeah. 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 I am very clearly of Satan. Oh, I thought you, oh. I thought you meant because it's like you were adopted, so you literally are like a gift, like you're a gift being given to your parents. Oh, you were looking at it in a wholesome way. I was looking at I was it looking... in a wholesome way. I was looking at it in a self-deprecating way. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for being wholesome with me. You're welcome. So, Halloween. Yeah, Halloween. Uh, we decided uh, that we had some information that we either cut from previous podcasts or we found and it didn't, like, apply, but we still wanted to use it. And uh, we just wanted to put it together in a way that shoehorns it uh, into a uh, Halloween theme. For example, uh, I uh, am going to be discussing all the stuff that I cut from episode one about the rap party for um, Snow White because, you know, like Halloween, Halloween party, you know. I think, yeah. I think it, it's tenuous at best, but I think it fits and there's a lot of fun stuff happening. Well, I think so. And, you know, we weren't even going to do like a Halloween special. And so this is kind of like last minute anyway. And so I think that's perfect because we've been I mean, like how many times have you brought up the rap party and then we just never get into it? Right. I'm so excited to talk about it because it's one yeah. of my favorite things of yeah. all time. But because this is your Halloween special. Yes. I'm going to go second. I would like for you to go first. And. <gasps> Yay. You do it. You're doing a community, so it's like trick or treating themed. Yeah, so it's um well, sort of, um yeah. I just have a little a little thing, and then and then you can get into yours. But um, I wanted to talk about a a community 
that Disney built. It's um, so first of all, uh, on a whim, I googled the words Disney and murder to see oh, if I'd is... get any hits. <laughs> this is turning out so well already. Yeah, because because you know I'm a true crime freak, and I was yeah. like, I'm gonna try to at least attempt to like, because okay. Karen is... Kilgariff, sponsor us. <laughs> sponsor us. Georgia Hearts like sponsor us. Yeah. Um, so, because like, okay, I've been wanting to say this like, you know, for a few episodes, but like, I don't want any of our listeners to think that I am even close to being a Disney fan. Like, I'm not a Disney mega fan where I buy like the mugs and do my annual Disney trip, and I'm not even like a I'm not even like a big fan of Disney. I'm actually on the edge of disliking Disney, you know, for for being just like, you know, money hungry and awful. Talking about celebration and like googling Disney murder was my attempt to go, okay, I'm going to try to play along. You know, I'm not going to bitch and moan the entire time that we're doing this podcast and say how much I hate Disney. I'm going to try. I'm going to make an effort and like try to relate to Disney on something that I'm interested in. And that was murder. <laughs> you know, like, let me find something. I assumed maybe, like, somebody killed somebody else at Burbank, you know, uh, studios or something like that. There have notoriously been, like, very few deaths on Disney property by design. Like, if you're that, dying that at they, Disney... That they reveal. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But, I think, like, if you're dying at Disney, they'll just yeet. Yeah. So you die in the parking lot, not on the property. Or you die, like, in one of the resorts rather than, like, in one of the more important areas. But, right. um, yeah, so I assume, yeah, something like that. Or you know how, like, all those horror movies, you know, they have, they have uh, stories about how there was a murderer on the set. Or, like, the Power Ranger murders, you know, where it's just this random, you know, kids show that has a weird murder. Um, anyway, so I was like, oh, let me look it up. So that, uh, just typing Disney and murder into Google, th that is what led me to Celebration Florida, which is a community established in the early 90s by the Disney company. Um, now, what do you know, I don't know if I should be asking this question at this point, but what do you know, if anything, about Celebration? All right. Here's the bare bones that I know, because I did do like a deep dive into like Midway to Main Street and um, Disney food blog. And I got a lot of information about a lot of weird Disney history. Really, though, all I got on Celebration is this. They made a community in Florida that they completely designed. Um, and it was, you know, like, a, it, it was like an okay place, but because they outsourced it, like, things weren't built, like, to the standards that pe people look forward to in Disney product and eventually they just like cut their losses and went 23 skidoo split ski on the uh, ownership so that's yeah like that's that's essentially what what happened just kind of um just as a whole what happened um this like stuff that i collected and like i researched th there's there's more like there's more than what I have gotten, but I I eventually had to just cut myself off because I'm like, no, I can't. I can't do all of this. This would be this is like an entire podcast mini series in itself. And I think actually they have Ooh. done podcast mini series on celebration and other things. Um, and I think other podcasts have done episodes on celebration in the past. It's definitely and I, I mean, if it's a it's a community built by Disney at the end of the day, yes. there's something interesting there yeah so i'm going to go on i'm going to tell you about celebration florida so now let's dive in um get your mouse house goggles on and let's dive in i've um, got my disney brand goggles on i've got my <laughs> mickey mouse snorkel and you're, yeah it has like a little mickey mouse ear on the top that's like the strap um, launching into the guitar shaped pool at all-star music Mm-hmm. Yep, mm -hmm. absolutely. 
<laughs> dive into the death pond. Um, <laughs> we'll get <laughs> to that later. <laughs> uh, Celebration was built in the 90s by Disney to be an idyllic suburban community with beautiful landscaping, cheerful neighbors, and really cute downtown attractions and shops. Um, basically, think like, I don't know if you've ever been to Dollywood or like, I'm, I was trying to think of, of places where you might have been. But I was supposed to go to Dollywood this year. Oh, I'm so sorry. Me too. Um, but yeah, I have been to Dollywood, even though I'm a person who never goes anywhere and does anything. I somehow have gone to Dollywood. Um, <laughs> but it's basically like, you know, it's it's sometimes theme parks have it and sometimes like historical villages have it where there's like little cottages and candy shops and, you know, a man-made lake stocked with fish. And, you know, it's like that sort of very touristy, kitschy type place. Um and, you know, they have, like, the old taffy pole, and they have, everything's just, like, kind of artificial and cheerful and everything. Um, you know, speakers hidden in trees, piping fake bird song, and Christmas music and stuff. I don't know if you've ever been to a place like that, but um, there are many attractions like that. But this, you think of that as, like, an actual town. Like, that's, like, the town. It's, it's technically not a town, it's a community, but it's, people call it a town. Um, yeah, so this is, like, the town, not just part of a theme park. It was all carefully artificial, and, of course, a lot of it was Disney-themed. So, essentially, it was this perfect, nostalgic world where you could live in a fantasy instead of having to deal with the real world. Um, and they opened up a lottery for the available homes, and for the, like, 400 or so properties, they had over 5,000 people enter to try to get one. So, real quick. Yeah. Uh, just because I don't want to, I, I, I don't want to jump to a conclusion. Yeah. You said that they, like at Dollywood, they have speakers that play bird song. Yeah. And speakers that play music. Yeah. So they just have speakers like randomly around the community. I, I, I won't say town. I guess it's, it's a community. But they just have speakers randomly around the community. In the public and, area. In, like, public, public areas. The public area. I just like saying community in that voice. Oh, okay. It makes me feel, it makes me feel so, so very new, new rich. Okay. Okay, no. I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad for your win. I'm taking that back. I'm taking small, that back. Small, so, small wins matter these days. Yeah. Yeah. Love wins these days. Yes, so speakers that pipe speakers. bird songs and music and stuff. Um, so they're just piping music, right? They're not actually piping bird song. That's weird. No, it's piping bird song. It, the music is only in, like, Christmas time. I mean, it's all weird, but... Yeah, but for the most part, it's, yeah, like, fake bird song. Um, and, and they also have, um, in, in the wintertime, since it's, <laughs> you know, in Florida, and they don't really get snow there... Um, there is fake snow, which is nicknamed Snope because it's essentially soap foam, uh, that they have on the rooftops and they make it like fake snow outside with the, the Snope. That sounds environmentally unfriendly. <laughs> Quite. And there's also an ice rink that's really a sheet of white plastic, which is really funny. Um, and then that's... in- yeah, and then in autumn, the town would allegedly import fallen leaves to waft around the streets. <laughs> wow. Yeah, because like Going only whole hog on it, huh? Yeah, well, c- you know, it's celebration. Um, it's owned by Disney. They got to keep up their aesthetic standards. So, um, yeah, so five thousand people, like over five thousand people, tried to get one of like over four hundred homes. Now, here is a uh, a segment of the celebration brochure. Here's a quote from from the original brochure that like the Disney Imagineer like ad people mm-hmm. sent out. There once was a place where neighbors greeted neighbors in the quiet of summer twilight, where children chased fireflies and porch swings provided easy refuge from the cares of the day. The movie house showed cartoons on Saturday. The grocery store delivered. And there was one teacher who always knew you had that special something. Remember that place? Pepperidge Farm remembers. <laughs> Pepperidge Farm remembers. Yeah, so that's that's a, 
a snippet from so that that's what they're trying to capture they're trying to capture that like 50s 60s like nostalgic leave your front door unlocked type feeling it it's it's i can definitely see what they're going for Mm -hmm. um i don't know how they're going to guarantee the teacher that can see a special something but well, you know, just, I mean, there's not going <laughs> to, they also say we're children chased fireflies. They're not going <laughs> to pipe in Import fireflies. fireflies. <laughs> it's just the, it's, it's the feeling. It's the general like gist of it, you know? They're catching the emotions. Yeah, the emotions. It's an appeal to emotion. What's That's, that's a fallacy of some kind, isn't it? Uh, yeah, some, but it's also just like a speech technique pathos yeah, um that's true so yeah so they're yeah they're appealing to the, the the pathos of the community disney has they have a reputation for having really high standards with their properties and with their you know places so a lot of people were really excited because they were like this can actually be feasible because disney has you know done a lot with their theme parks so people actually believed that disney could make this fantasy their fantasy the disney fantasy a reality um but once the new residents were settled it became clear that there was a price to living in a fantasy because they were now responsible for maintaining that fantasy oh each resident received a hefty binder upon move-in that gave guidelines for living in that community including extremely strict aesthetic upkeep rules Um, For example, if you wanted to plant greenery, there were only, like, five varieties you were allowed to choose from, and only certain colors of flowers were permitted. Uh, And there was also a mandate that you had to have, I'm pretty sure, at least one hidden Mickey Mouse icon somewhere on your property. Um, In addition to these rules, the Disney staff that oversaw the upkeep of the community were also in charge of maintenance in the houses. And it wasn't long after move-in before residents began complaining about plumbing issues, leaky roofs, and other problems that came from what had allegedly been a rush job on the houses themselves, as you said. Um, And actually, the the claim, or the, um, the, the inquiry dug up the, uh, the people who had actually worked on the house, like the housing designers and, and workers themselves, and they confirmed that they had really strict deadlines and that they basically had to sacrifice structural integrity in favor of Disney's really high aesthetic standards. Yikes. Yeah. Um, these problems basically persisted without being fixed or addressed. I mean, there was over 70 houses that reported leaky roofs, but it just wasn't really fixed, um, you know, right right away. All while the homeowners were being held to the continually high property standards. Um, aesthetics were everything to those who ran Celebration, and there were ordinances that banned things like billboards and McDonald's franchises. Wow. Yeah. Can't even, you can't get a McDonald's in Disney. Nope. And I mean, That's there, interesting. there were things like, you know, you couldn't have your car parked on the street in front of your house. They literally had lanes behind the houses specifically for parking, like for, for parked cars and trash cans and stuff because you couldn't have them on the curb because it would ruin the curb appeal. That's weird. That's yeah. really weird to me. I mean, that, yeah, and there's so, so much more. And most of this is actually still the same. Like, they want to claim that it's different now, but I read through their their um, guidelines. They have it online, and it's like 166 pages. Like, it's crazy. So It's like when you go out and you get a new haircut and you say, I'm a whole new person, but really you're still dead inside. Yeah, well, and I'll, and I'll, I'll get into, you know, a little bit of why it hasn't changed that much anyway. Um, (laughs) so the community was so separated from reality that residents commonly called it the bubble and former residents remarked that upon moving away and leaving the bubble, people they considered their best friends and loved ones while living there no longer talked to them. One particular- that's- Right? That's creepy. (laughs) Right? That's creepy. I mean, yeah, it's, it's like, it really is a closed community. And of course, there's a huge Disney prejudice too, where if you haven't been, it's, it's, you know, not unheard of to shun somebody who hasn't been to Disney World or Disneyland. Sorry. 
Uh, Disney World's in Florida, Disneyland. I, oh, God, if I don't, it's so freaking stupid. It's so stupid. If I don't stupid. say it, someone much less gentle than me will. You like, know that I don't care. You, I know you, you don't care. You know that I could not, I absolutely could not care any less than I do right now. So That's fair. I just don't want a comment section that's technically in Burbank, yeah. California. Yeah. Well, I'd rather them do that than comment on something I would be legitimately insecure about. <laughs> um, That's fair, I guess. Yeah. But anyway, honestly, I'm tempted, <laughs> I'm tempted to learn which is which so that I could continually say the opposite one. So let's see. Yeah, like in, in the bubble, gosh, I looked at so many freaking articles to make sure that the things that I was reading actually were true. But um, <laughs> then they could not be. They could just be lies that are copied and pasted across like five yeah, different yeah. sites but we'll see so you think people would do that go on the internet and just tell lies i you know i've heard that before i i i hope it's not true wild that is cult yeah. that is cult behavior uh well here we go um <laughs> so a common phrase among residents was celebration separation used to describe the apparently happily married residents who would move in and then get a divorce due to dissatisfaction and boredom brought about by their entry into the bubble. Um, boredom was really a big reason for a lot of problems in the community because there really was, like, nothing. I mean, it was idyllic, yeah, but it was also boring. Um they don't even have a McDonald's. Yeah, they don't have a McDonald's. Um, also due to boredom were the reportedly common swinger parties and wife swapping, which oh! often went hand in hand with the divorce rate. Bruh. <laughs> Bruh. Are you... <laughs> oh, man. Yep. Um, so one resident referred to celebration as a quote, incestuous town, end quote, likely a result of how insular of community it was. Oh, thank God. I. Oh, yeah, no, but like, it's like in, within the town itself. I mean, it's bad, but it's not. Yeah, yeah. it's not that bad. Yeah. Um. I mean, it might be. We just don't know because they That's don't because it's the bubble. Nobody tells us about anything. It's the bubble. They, they wouldn't tell uh... us. We have to move there to find out. Yeah, exactly. All right. Just so... don't move there with your family. Yeah, no. Well, you split up anyways. Let me let me get into that. Um, so basically the belief at the outset, this is kind of what I said before, but I'm going to say it again. The belief at the outset was that Disney had the power to turn its own fantasy into a reality. And that persuaded many people to take large risks. Um, you know, large risks being moving there in the first place. Uh, the concept is especially appealing when you're someone who has an unpleasant reality to escape from, such as a stale home life, financial problems, or an unhappy marriage. Oh. Um, now, besides, you know, celebration, separation, and all that, celebrations school soon became a problem. In the town's advertising in early stages, its new school was the centerpiece and by far the biggest draw for residents to move there. I mean, first of all, it's Disney, so that has family appeal just right out the gate. But um, celebration school, which I think they called it like the celebration learning center or something um but the, the celebration school was basically advertised as being this super progressive cutting edge like really you know innovative school and it was kind of the shining jewel in the center of celebration because all these families you know they would go there and they would want their kids to have like not only a great community to grow up in and be able to walk to school, but also have just a, an amazing school experience. I mean, that's really the whole yeah. point of doing this. It's it's not just like old retirees, like normally in Florida, it's also young families. Because like if you've got kids, you know, like, yeah, take them to Di the idea is, you know, take them to Disney every so and again. But if you got kids, like you got kids. Yeah. You got to take care of your kids. So it's, yes, and, and you're, if you're especially a family with kids who is really big into Disney and also, you know, might have some marital problems and be wanting to fix the family. I mean, how many, okay, speaking of Halloween, how many horror movies or, or like haunted house movies start with a family with like marital problems where like the husband cheats on the wife or something and they, they want a fresh start? 
Like this yeah, is it's it. It's going to be a new start for us. Yeah, exactly. Like this, that that is. We have to make this work. In a nutshell, I don't care if the walls are bleeding. In a nutshell, this is exactly what celebration, like, promised for people. Not not directly, but that's that's bleeding walls. Clearly not. Clearly not. But get me to move the there. like a, a fresh start. Living in this idyllic fantasy world is what that's the promise that celebration held for these people so um yeah so this it, and that is centralized in the school so its new school was touted as i said as being progressive and cutting edge and a completely new and unique learning experience and they they brought in experts from like harvard and from a bunch of other places like award-winning educators and coordinators to try and find a new learning experience and just to kind of you know um completely redirect the old learning experience and turn it into almost like a tomorrowland type situation how badly did they it up so once it opened it was described as perplexing and weird <laughs> and it, the best way to describe any school <laughs> right or a community like this uh and led furious parents to pull their children out of the school many families moving out of celebration altogether like that's it that was the whole reason why they moved there in the first place and spent you know four hundred thousand dollars or had like a four hundred thousand dollar mortgage on God, their Christ. house uh, yeah it's crazy expensive to live there i mean because it's owned by disney come on but yeah of course of course and it's in florida yeah, and it's in florida so yeah and so a lot of families were like you know what screw it we're just gonna move away and um a lot of families said you know we we, you know, put our kids in the school in the hopes that they would progress, but it's not even just that they haven't progressed. In some cases, I feel like my child has regressed. <laughs> and I'm like, dang, okay. <laughs> school, wow. school made my kid dumber. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, wow, Disney, you really goofed that one up, huh? <laughs> You know, uh, learning about this, it's it's starting to become a lot more apparent why Disney's America failed as bad as it did. Yeah, this just really crashed and burned. I could honestly, um, like when I said in the beginning that I could do way more about this, I was specifically talking about the school because somebody literally wrote a book about the school. God. Yeah, that's how bad it was and how, like interestingly bad <laughs> the pr the process was so um because it really was a big deal i mean like you know it made new it made news cover you know it had a lot of news coverage they made a big you know there was a whole big to do about it because a lot of expectations were on the school itself so <laughs> the idea was to reinvent learning and have a instead of having like one class of 25 to 30 students with one teacher they now had a class of like 80 kids of varying grade levels overseen by three teachers in a big room and they didn't even call it like a classroom they called it i think a neighborhood or something and there was like couches and there was like different areas and stuff um, there wasn't really a lot of desks. It was mostly like computers and stuff. And they, I think the attempt was to, for the students to rely on each other to like lead and guide each other, but it just completely and absolutely failed. Um, I am, I'm not going <laughs> to lie on paper. This sounds like an awful idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um and this sounds like the worst and one of the and and because they got i mean they got for the most part very good educators to to fill the school um and one chemistry teacher apparently was so exasperated uh she she goes on record there's a quote from her saying like i i don't know how to do any of this i can just all i can do is teach chemistry like <laughs> That's what I went to school for is to teach chemistry. I can't do like this whole thing. And because it was very like feelings based and intuition based and very like progressive school type mindset, you know? It it sounds like a community center. It's and they and they even hesitated like 
calling them students and teachers. I think instead of students, they wanted to call them learners. And then instead of teachers, they called them learning leaders. Like I hate this. <laughs> me too. But somehow they were like, this is great. Um, let me, let me, let me make myself clear. Um, I, I am no fan of the way that school is structured in America today. Like mm -hmm. it's very bad. Mm -hmm. It's very terrible, mm -hmm. but this is so much worse. Yeah. Like I, I, I used to be of the mentality that any alternative is better than the way school happens in America. <laughs> I'm so glad I was proven wrong. That's that's actually you really touched on what these people like what these parents were thinking, because that's exactly why they wanted to take a chance on this school, because they were thinking, well, you know, I want something new for my kids. I don't want the old way that I was taught. I want something new and perhaps better. And I trust that they are going to provide that. And then at the end of it, the parents were thinking, well, this I'm just going to enroll them in a normal school and have them learn like I learned because that is going to be way more effective than this new thing that isn't actually working. Um, anyway, the school was, as I said, was crazy packed. Um, the, the rooms and they were overseen by only three teachers. Um, in addition, the report cards were structured really weirdly like they were extremely detailed and they included like harsh criticisms and almost like like ad hominem criticisms of each child and it was not really like like quantitative or qualitative measure measurement of their academic progress it was more like judgment calls on how they are as a person and as like an individual uh, on like a behavioral level that's yeah. So so much worse. <laughs> so much worse. Awful, 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 awful. And it's just like not even. Yeah. So um, and even the principal they hired, who, by the way, was this very successful woman. Um, she was interviewed over the phone with questions like, would you say you're you're the life of the party? And what was your most embarrassing moment? Like she w even she was asked questions like less to make sure she's qualified and competent and more to make sure that she has the right personality for the job. This is bad. Isn't that just, <laughs> just like, this is bad. Oh this my is gosh. So... And that's why I had to talk about this because I just, I'm like, okay, this isn't even like close to what I wanted to talk about. And I'm just imagining, like, this. the nightmare of putting someone through this. <laughs> right, like... In any stage. Yeah, and I'm sure, like, I I had to stop myself from researching it anymore. And I'm sure nowadays, because I think the, the, um, the local, like, government in Florida, the local government, I think, made them change the name to Celebration School and made it, like you know, more regulated, but oh, you don't think they still have learners and learning <laughs> leaders? I hope they do. That would be really funny. But yeah, just but... A, a big room with 80 kids and 12 couches. Yeah, that's yeah. a great idea. Yeah. That's, that's with wonderful. like little to no oversight or chaperoning whatsoever. What could God, go I can... wrong? That, that's just how I wanted to turn out when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. So God. there is honestly so much more about the school but we need to move on um i'm cutting us off last we call to, last round um also at this point uh i after this point i'll be mentioning some violent death and things so sensitive listeners be warned uh oh nate you're just gonna have to deal with it <laughs> abby yes <laughs> abby yes Oh, you thought Violent you death. thought the you thought the school was the weird. You you thought the uh the swinger parties <laughs> was the weird part. We're just ramping it up now, aren't we? Mm -hmm. It's like okay, swinger parties. Oh ho ho, that's wild. This terrible nightmare school that's a parody of you know like how does the math problem make mm -hmm. you feel like I can't I can't believe. And now we're talking about violent death, but I. I guess that happens in a community, right? Yeah, I mean, it definitely does. 
but considering Disney touted this as like a crime free and you know and perfect community, it's just funny. Um, and mm-hmm. actually, with all of like in response to, I think one of these, one or two of these um, things that I'm going to describe. Um, oh yeah, there's more than one by the way. Um, one of the people in the town, I don't remember what her name was. She's like a, a I think she was a real estate agent or something that lived in the town. We we'll call her Pamela Voorhees. Sure, and she. <laughs> I can't stop laughing at her response because basically people were asking like, Hey, what do you think about the fact that there have been violent things happening? And she's like, well, you know, like one or two violent incidents in 14 years, that's, that's pretty good. That's pretty good for a community. I mean, I, I called up a friend who, who lives, you know, in a, in a city and, and he said, Oh yeah, I would, I would, you know, I would go for that in a heartbeat. That's super safe. And I'm like, what? You're I mean, you're not wrong, but yeah, that's you're, you're not right. You're bragging about there only being like two deaths in fourteen years. Okay, that's okay. I mean, you should just be sad that there's any deaths at all. I mean, I would, but it was it was almost like a pitch to get people to move there. Like, and I think she she was saying like, yeah, I'm I'm getting people calling every day to to move to celebration. <laughs> like. Yeah, I'm sure you feel, are. It feels very heartless and corporate, doesn't it? Uh, huh? It feels very heartless and corporate, doesn't it? Like, it how feels, do you feel about these it, two violent deaths? Well, statistically, we're doing fantastic. It is. It is absolutely on brand for celebration. <laughs> it is. Hundred ten percent. Okay, so let's get into it. Let's get into the the uh, the spoopy part. Get into it, of man. My segment. So, in 2010. A celebration school teacher was found bludgeoned and strangled to death in his condo. The perpetrator was a young man who said the victim had asked him back to his condo to do some maintenance work, then had tried to sexually assault him. After the story was released, former st- students of the victim came forward and said they had experienced the same pedophilic behavior from this teacher when he'd been alive. Uh, soon so... after. Very soon after this, still in 2010, another resident had a 14-hour standoff with police before shooting himself in his home. Uh, He had been suffering from marriage problems and financial trouble. Um, Then there is the Death Pond. It's a pond that's a mile or so south of Celebration, where before 1998, the road would turn sharply to the left, and there were no warning signs, so people would go plummeting straight into the pond. Like, there was no guardrail, there was nothing, so people would just go right into the pond. The most famous incident was three young guys in the summer of 98 who vanished on vacation down in Florida. Nine months later, their car and bodies were found at the bottom of the lake. It's rumored that police also found at least four other cars at the bottom, but I haven't seen that confirmed anywhere. So I think it's just the three guys and a few other freak accidents. So that's the death pond. Uh, which, that's the death pond. <laughs> which technically isn't in celebration itself, but it's on the outskirts. But we... Like, you led with the... You led with the killers! With the literally and figuratively, like I hear fourteen hour standoff with oh, a guy yeah. who shot shot himself in Disney Presents Celebration Florida. <laughs> yeah. And then we go from that into a traffic accident. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, Celebration was still thirsty for blood after their ninety eight incident, so they figured they'd up the ante. Um Jeez I'm crow. Sorry, that was that was morbid. Um so the latest incident and the one that I came across on my initial Disney murder search happened around Christmas 2019 to a family living in celebration. The man of the house murdered his wife and three kids, as well as, sorry gentle listeners, as well as their dog. I like how that's what we have to warn people about. Yes. Like, he, he murdered the kids, but he also killed the dog. I considered, yeah, I that's that was a, a specific decision that I made, because I'm like, you know, a... A guy kills his family. That's very sad. But then, 
talk. <laughs> there, there's a website. I'm all right with familiacide, but I draw the line at animal abuse. There's a there's a uh, there's a website called Does the Dog Die for a Reason. Yeah. Uh, so according to reports, now this story was like, you know, interesting and weird. Whenever I first researched it a few months ago, but then I looked at it again today and there are like two new things that happened that are like what oh my god (laughs) nobody else dies um but yeah so (laughs) according to reports the victims were dosed with benadryl and then stabbed multiple times actually the youngest was not stabbed i think just um dosed with benadryl and then but then the other two kids and then the the uh, wife were both stabbed or all three stabbed uh, police didn't search the home until a month later, but they finally did. Actually, because um, the out-of-state relatives of the wife and, like, of the family, they didn't ever submit an official, like, missing persons report for any of the people that were missing. But they did, I'm pretty sure they started, like, <laughs> this is going to sound so awful they started a facebook group um (laughs) for the missing people and basically tried to do it that way where they found where they tried to find the uh, the wife and kids that way and i think the facebook group got like 2500 followers or something like that Um, but they i don't think they ever officially did like a missing persons report or like did it the moral of the story is people are stupid yeah yeah and and they they might have eventually done a police report. I just saw on my research that I did that they that they hadn't conducted like an official like manhunt specifically. So, but a month later, police did search the home. It was on January fifteenth, and they found the bodies in the upstairs master bedroom. Um, and actually, police had asked uh, the guy, which I'm I'm leaving all of these people nameless out of respect and out of I don't want to sensationalize any of these killers because they don't deserve it. Um we'll call him Roy Burns. We we just we, we need to just call them like asshole number 12 and just like keep like a numbered list cuz yeah. Yeah. They don't deserve any glory at all. Um but when they when police asked they they knocked on his door and asked him like where his family was, he said that they're upstairs sleeping in the bedroom. And oh, then they went up that's and chilling. Yeah. So yeah. Um they found the bodies and he confessed appar- apparently and then he got arrested and went to prison. He was just living with them for a month. For a month. Yeah. Just living. Just living. With them. Yep. Which is crazy. <laughs> In Florida. In Florida. <laughs> In Florida. I don't know if the for AC is that good. Um, yeah. So it really is a testament to the AC of the units in uh, Celebration, Florida. If that doesn't get you to move there, I don't know what. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> Just, yeah. God. Yeah. So months later from prison, he claimed kind of earlier-ish in the year. Uh, he claims he can't remember anything that happened for weeks during the time it happened. Like, his memory would just be really spotty. Um, of course. Of course. Of course he would say that. But then, this is the, this is the new thing that I found today. A few months ago, he, in a letter, I think in a letter to his dad, maybe, um, or to somebody else, he began claiming that it was actually his wife who had drugged and murdered the others then drank a bottle of Benadryl in front of him before stabbing herself in the abdomen. What an okay. asshole, right? What did like okay, let me let me hold my my emotions in check until I get done reading this. I don't remember anything. <laughs> Actually, I remember everything and it was that bitch Catherine. Exactly, cuz it starts out it starts out, yeah, I did it. No, it starts out they're sleeping, then Oh, I did it. Then, oh, I don't remember. Then, oh, it was her. Like, okay. Um, He claims she was suffering from depression and other chronic mental illnesses. And, you know, it's just been so hard for him to come out and say this because he still loves her. And you know what? He forgives her for doing it. Wow, how big of him. His entire alibi is just one of the dumbest and most ridiculous, yet also saddest things i've ever heard i mean 
if I didn't think he did it before he released his newest statement, I definitely think he did it now. Because his story for what happened is just, like, ludicrous. It's like, and that's why I say, I don't mean sad, like, I feel sorry for him that, like, it happened or whatever, but sad in that it's, like, pitiful. Stooping this low. Yeah. Because being that kind of a that kind of a loser. Right. And he called like the media. He he was like, oh, yeah, this grand circus, like talking about the media. Like, no, you don't get to do any of that. So um, you murdered your family in Disney Presents Celebration Florida, (laughs) lived with them for a month. And suddenly it's that bitch Catherine's fault. Exactly. Like, are you kidding? And I we're so glad that you forgive her. We're yeah. so glad you forgive yeah. Catherine. How you big of you. Son of a bitch. How big of you. Um yeah, cuz he said like cuz the Benadryl had been I guess in like desserts or something like he like the Benadryl had been laced in the desserts that they had had that night. Um <laughs> Because, like, okay. Um, <laughs> but. Well, maybe I can believe it now because this doesn't sound like the kind of guy who would make his family dessert. Oh, yeah. No, of course not. So apparently <laughs> apparently that morning they, like, she, his wife had woken up and, like, and he was happy because she seemed, she seemed a lot better than usual and a lot more alert than usual. I'm like, okay. Um, and that he had basically spent most of his day over at the condo that he owned. And that he was like renovating, and he was gone for uh, most of the evening because he came back and his wife has made had made dessert and he it looked delicious apparently, but he didn't have any because he was trying to lose some weight apparently, <laughs> so he didn't have any. Okay, this is this is a this is bad yeah it's bad and then he went back out to work on the condo some more and he had also he made sure to mention that he wanted he he was uh looking to go and get a mickey mouse necklace for his daughter and that's another reason why he had been gone is because he wanted to buy her a mickey mouse necklace I'm because okay, um, <laughs> I'm seething right now. And then he, it was really late apparently. Whenever he stopped working, so he was so tired that he fell asleep in his car in the parking lot of the condo building, and didn't drive back until the next morning, where he found his kids dead and his wife was there. She said, "Do you forgive me?" for doing this and he said no and so she killed herself in front of him just killed herself by by drinking a bottle of benadryl drank a bottle of benadryl and then stabbed herself in the gut and he his reaction isn't to to call anyone or just you know scream nope or do anything at all for a month for a month he apparently uh tried to resuscitate her i guess uh, according to him, and then he didn't try that hard. If she died by drinking a bottle of Benadryl, that's that's not going to do it instantly. Well, and then stabbing herself in the abdomen. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I'm not I'm not contesting the fact that she was stabbed. Like, this sounds killed. like he found out that people in shock, you know, like he he found out that people in shock tend to you know like do things that normal people wouldn't do, and he was like. Oh, I didn't do any of that because I was in shock. Yeah. That'll get me out of prison. I don't know. Well, because then because then he mentioned that he tried to commit suicide by drinking Benadryl and poisoning himself. I don't, he was too strong. I don't know what is what is thing with Benadryl. But he, he apparently said uh, that and this was another thing that made me want to freaking punch him in the face because he never found that necklace no he pulled the pitiful card of i tried to commit suicide eight times and i'm just so weak i couldn't i'm such a loser i couldn't even do that right i'm like wow oh let me just hold on a second i i misplaced the world's smallest violin let me just look around and try to find it so i can play a song for you you freaking bastard Playing the pity card when his wife and kids and dog are dead. And have been for a month. 
And, and the dog. We can't forget the dog. We let's not forget the dog. Right. Say, what kind of a dog was yeah. it? Uh, I don't know, but his name was, I think his name was Swifty, which is really sad. Or, or yeah, Swifty, I think. But anyway, yeah, so um, that's the latest incident with uh with celebration and it kind of in in a way part of it encapsulates this idea of just create your own reality and you can just use your sense of entitlement because you have enough money to move into this community to just rewrite your own story and if things don't work out for you then just there you go if I were him, I would have stuck with I couldn't remember anything for weeks at a time. Right. Like at at the very least, that would have gotten him like a supernatural following. You know, he would have mm-hmm. had a he would have had a Amityville, you know, kind of scenario. People looking yeah. like, oh, this guy was possessed by the, the ghosts of Florida or Andrew Jackson came to life and wanted to do another duel. But with Benadryl. With Benadryl. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't know, know how much wh- how much Benadryl does this guy have in his house? <laughs> He's, he was he was hired to do this by a, a combination assassin and Benadryl salesman. I guess so. That's he, because uh, a lot of a lot of um, people were hit hard in this community because of the recession, and so maybe like he went all in on Benadryl, and it didn't work out for him. <laughs> I lost everything playing the market with Benadryl. Yeah, because I, I think. What do I do now? I think that was. I guess I kill my family and my dog. <laughs> I I didn't. I forgot to look at it, but I think. I remember that was part of it is like financial problems. I mean, that's really one of the main reasons why, you know, guys that have killed their families have done so is because of financial problems and like embezzling and stuff. Um, It's rarely ever like there's another woman. It's usually just like we're in debt five hundred thousand dollars because I gamble. Um, But I mean, it's my fault. So I'm going to make it everyone else's problem. Yeah. With murder. With murder. But. Yeah, it's, he didn't even, like, yeah, no. It just, no. Um, I've had enough of this dude. I've had had enough of this dude. So, yeah, that's Celebration Florida. Uh, Things have gotten a little better now that Disney sold most of the property rights over to another company. But the reason why I said before that it hadn't changed a whole lot is because only people who actually own land like only like landowners in the community can vote on any changes or like any ordinances or something or anything like that and the only people who actually own in celebration are extremely rich and also employed by disney because it's so close to the park so it's hardly worlds different than the stepford wives truman show waking nightmare it was at the start because the same people the same residents are there. I mean, like the the um, uh, the people who run the place are are different, but the residents themselves haven't really changed. It's still like mostly rich white Disney workers. You know, I actually I knew that about the Disney workers who who own land and they're the only ones that can vote. See, I... there you go. Wow. So yeah, now that now that it all it's all connected. It's all connected. Um and it's just so funny. And I'm sure like things like um, you know, the housing issues are probably a little bit fixed, but the people, you know, shunning those who aren't into Disney, that's still the same and you know, the crazy like as I said, the binder of things of like all the different it's like, still like a cult. the charter, I found that online. Like they have it listed and they even say, well, you know, it might be intimidating to get this binder, but it's really not that bad. It's just a few things and this, that and the other thing. And I looked at it and I'm like, oh, no, because like I looked at so many different articles from this, um, like Cracked does a really great. I, it seems a little bit clickbaity because it's like the six most bizarre things about celebration, but they actually are really, really good about including links to external sites and actually linking their sources, which is a breath of fresh air. So thank you, crack.com. Um, but Cracked. Sponsor. <laughs> Don't sponsor us. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's Celebration Florida and the grisly, grisly murders that have happened there. One of which 
has been recently or a grouping of which has been recently. And who knows, there may be more. Bah, bah, bah. So yeah, uh, how, you were going to tell me about the rap party? <laughs> how do I fall? <laughs> I mean, Fred Moore maybe threw a girl in a pool. Okay, but did Somebody... but, but did he dose her with the Benadryl and stab her before he threw her in the pool? <laughs> Somebody rode a horse on the second floor of the hotel. Was it a real horse or was it an animatronic horse? It was a real horse. You can't ride an animatronic horse. Dissecting the Mouse would like to acknowledge the concept art done on commission by Morgan, the title art done on commission by Eric, and the background art done on commission by Silas. We would also like to thank Silas for his audio editing, and Connor for his video editing, also done on commission. Links to the business information for all involved artists are provided in the expanded credits, as well as a bibliography of relevant sources. We would also like to recognize the research done by Nate Conrad and Abby Rose. Nate would like to extend his deepest thanks to his library co-workers. Dissecting the Mouse is intended to be a review based on subjective opinion, and is not intended to be a scholarly source. Thank you for listening. You see, here's the, here's the issue that I'm having. Mm-hmm. I literally cannot follow that <laughs> with anything about the rap party. <laughs> For two reasons. One, how? And two, I, I've just come to several realizations about things that I already know about another community that Disney planned to create. Uh-oh. And I... I don't have any sources right now. I don't have I don't have all the material in front of me right now. So I'm going to spend a whole year, Abby. Wow. I'm going to spend a whole year putting together my presentation. What do you know about uh Epcot? <laughs> <laughs>